Yo, what's up guys, Jack here, and today we're asking the question, has The Division got game? It's been out for a week now and has been a commercial success for Ubisoft, making it within the first 24 hours their most sold game ever on PC and console. Impressive considering it's a new IP too. So then, I've played for around 26 hours now, got to level 30, completed all of the missions, side missions and trundled around in the dark zone for a while. And in this video, I wanted to take a look at some of the positives, negatives and also some suggestions for future content and ways in which I think the game could be improved. Okay, so we're going to start with the positives and these are quite obvious and I would think universally agreed upon by those which have spent the last seven days playing the game. The graphics, animations, environments and detail in The Division are simply beautiful. It's a gorgeous looking game and painstaking work has gone into creating the most accurate and believable version of New York ever created in a video game. The skyscrapers looming above you, cars scattered around the streets, dead bodies, elaborate sewer systems and roof access. There's just so much to stop and look at here and just take a moment to think, damn, video games have really come on a long way in creating believable worlds. Does it look as good as the E3 trailers? No, nope, it doesn't, but as many people have stated, it's still an amazing looking game. And I think most people would have been blown away anyways by the actual real graphics here. Another thing I loved in the game, the level design. There's plenty of flanking routes, cover you can use almost anywhere, positions you can jump up to and gain oversight of an area to get a tactical advantage. The devs have once again put in a lot of effort here to allow players in groups of up to four to move efficiently through a level as they wish, although there are a few occasions you'll find a pillar or something that looks like you could take cover behind it, but in fact you cannot. The gunplay here is very satisfying too. If you've got a powerful weapon with big DPS, it feels great putting the big guys down. And each weapon feels quite different too, which is nice. Assault rifles like the Scar H have more kick to them and require bursting, whereas with SMGs, at close ranges you can hose the trigger. Nailing headshots with sniper rifles to reward you with a tasty sound and kick to the screen. Recall and accuracy can be balanced with your weapon mods, perks and talents. It's all very nice indeed. There's also a lot of depth here too in how you can set up your character and I love the fact that we have a classless system. At any point on the fly you can switch your gear and setup, change from a damage dealing DPS monster to a tank if you like or find a nice middle ground, be like a glass cannon sniper, be a support player with medical abilities to aid your squad or maybe a skills guy. There's certainly plenty of variation and control with the different playstyles to be had, there's lots and lots of visual custom for your character too in the form of hats, helmets, jackets, scarves and much much more. Moving swiftly on, I don't want to keep you here for the rest of the weekend, let's take a look at some of the negatives I've experienced with the game so far. To start with the story, not really the concept of it because I think it's a pretty cool idea but I don't think they executed the story well enough to make you actually give a damn about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Throughout the whole of the main missions it felt like I was just going from mission to mission, there's someone talking over the radio in the background, go here, kill that guy then on to the next mission. It all just blurred into one to be honest. From memory the only characters I can name are Fei Lau and Jessica Candle. Do I care about them or what they have to say? Not one iota. It probably doesn't help either that your character is a mute and doesn't say a word throughout the whole game or acknowledge anything in the game at all really. Yes, the story is fleshed out with optional evidence cutscenes you collect after completing main missions or echoes scattered around the game. A few of them are pretty cool but the majority are forgettable. None of this stuff is actually in the game world itself which really removes you from all of it. And the antagonist of the game, you barely hear anything about that person until right at the end of the game and even then it's just an echo. There's not really any chase or drive here for the player and when the story is completed you just feel a total lack of satisfaction and accomplishment. What I would have liked to see instead was to flesh it out more and just make it a bit more personable. I wanted to hear the stories of the civilians or maybe the people camping out in my base of operations. I wanted to interact with them, listen to their problems and maybe provide solutions to them within the missions. 
None of that sort of stuff makes an appearance here and that's a shame. Compare what we have in The Division to something like Mass Effect for example where you can do that sort of stuff, meet new people, have dialogues with your crew and form relationships with them and the base of operations in The Division is a shadow of that and it just becomes a place you go back to to craft and resupply. I feel like in the base game there's just so many missed opportunities there. And now let's talk about the main missions themselves, one of my biggest gripes with the game. I just find them incredibly boring and repetitive, there simply isn't enough variety there for me and so much more could have been done let alone me wanting to play them through again on hard or challenging modes. Out of the 27 main missions or so, only 3 of them were actually enjoyable for myself and the group that I played with. The Police Academy, Russian Consulate and the final mission. Most of the missions in the game are exactly the same thing, just in different environments. You aren't going to find any interesting mechanics or challenges here, they all tend to follow a very similar structure. Go to a building, kill a load of enemies who are exactly the same bullet sponges, get to a point, defend it from more bullet sponges and maybe a boss, on the way perhaps pick up object A and insert it into object B and then end mission. That's honestly how most of the missions go down. Nine hours into the game I was about ready to stop playing but I carried on in the hope that more variety would come, sadly it didn't. The enemy types to start with, they're all essentially the same thing, just various degrees of guys wearing armour. There's a few that have weak spots but that alone isn't enough to promote thoughtful challenging gameplay. From time to time shotguns will rush you and you'll have to focus fire, maybe enemies will throw a grenade at you and you'll have to move or later on in the game the enemies actually start to use gadgets like turrets and hacks that force you to change your game up but there's just simply not enough of that. The factions aren't particularly different either, just slightly different outfits but exactly the same attack patterns. Throughout the whole campaign as a squad we never once felt challenged and never had to synergize our team play and abilities or in fact communicate or come up with a tactic to defeat a boss. It was always sit back, reinforce cover, put a med station down and all pump as many bullets into the named enemies as they slowly walk towards you. That gets really boring fast for me. Even the challenge missions that we played, they're supposed to be the hardest missions in the game and it's just a boring war of attrition where enemies have more health and do more damage. So to beat it, it takes four times as long, you end up just reviving a load of times, you sit back, kite the enemies into a choke point and spam bullets and grenades. That isn't fun, it isn't really a challenge and it doesn't introduce any new mechanics either. To offer up some suggestions here we discussed as a group. There's a mission near the end of the game where you attack a bridge and assist JTF forces. The attacking part was great fun, any mission which sees you taking part in progressive gameplay is brilliant but when you get to the end of the bridge it's just another defend against bullet sponges wave after wave game that becomes boring fast. Instead of that, why couldn't you have had a boss that rocks up in a Humvee with a heavy machine gun on top or a grenade launcher smashing things as he went along? He pins you down and suppresses you and then you've got to work together as a squad to distract him, pick up C4 or RPGs and destroy it in stages. Or how about a mission on the Brooklyn Bridge where the cleaners have set it on fire and are attempting to blow it up with satchel charges. You've got to storm it and defuse the charges but at the same time an attack helicopter is flying around raining down bullets on top of you and then you need to desperately scrounge around for RPGs to take it out and complete your mission. Another one, the Rikers have taken control of Liberty Island and are broadcasting propaganda messages from the Statue of Liberty. Your mission is to go over there on a boat in the cover of darkness and silently take them out. Or how about a tank that's been hijacked by a group of thugs roaming the streets around Times Square wreaking havoc. You bump into it beginning a mission to destroy its tracks with sticky bombs and kill the people inside operating it. Have a raid style mission where you enter the Empire State Building and travel to the top, clearing it floor by floor and ending up in a parachute jump from the top. You see all of these massive skyscrapers and buildings in the game but you never actually get to go inside of them, there's a distinct lack of verticality. I could go on all day and bore you but the main point to take away from this is that I think the game lacks spectacle, excitement and variety in its missions. There's not enough fun here and I think it takes itself too seriously at times. 
Now then, final negative before we move on to the conclusion, Endgame and the Dark Zone. I'm rolling these into one because at the moment the Dark Zone is the Endgame and there's not much to do there. Once you've completed all of the missions, side missions, fully upgraded your base and abilities, I estimate with a group of four you can probably do it in around 11 to 15 hours. You head to the Dark Zone to get better loot and that's the Endgame. You go from pack to pack of enemies in the Dark Zone looking for the named bad guys, killing them, picking up the loot, extracting it, grinding XP and Phoenix credits and then you do the same thing over and over again until you've got all gold gear and your DPS is insane but for what purpose and that right there is the problem with the end game in the division do you go and find the best loot for PvP no because there's no point going rogue if you survive rogue status you get very little dark zone XP there's no incentive and if you die you lose a shitload is that worth it no it's not and that's why no one goes rogue in the dark zone and it's just become a PvE farming area with no actual missions, just packs of mobs to go around killing. That's the end game at the moment and it's pretty boring. There's no goal here, nothing to work towards, no raid to complete when you get to Dark Zone rank 50. There's no light at the end of the tunnel and that's a big shame. There's just nothing there in the base game after that point. That's why I think the game needs traditional PvP game modes in the Dark Zone. I want to use that sick loot that I've picked up and spent hours grinding for in game modes like King of the Hill, Territory Control, Battle Royale, Capture the Loot. How about a game mode where a group can go and claim an area of the map in the Dark Zone and then send out like an instance-wide message to the other 20 players in there, hey, you've got five minutes to get up to this point and take it from us. If you succeed, you get a shitload of XP and maybe a guaranteed gold loot drop from it. If you die, you're going to lose a load of XP. You need a risk-reward system there. The Dark Zone would also benefit from actual missions and raids. There's just so much scope for cool story missions in there about the worst of the worst people that kind of went insane or took advantage of the Dark Zone. Stuff like that would really spice up the endgame and add value and longevity to the product. Now, in response to this, it has to be said that the developers have laid out their plans for more content to be added in the game with a trailer. In April, we get a free incursion that's apparently going to be a really tough four-player mission with loot rewards. And then in May, we get Conflict, which adds another incursion and will apparently change the way you play in the Dark Zone. I'm hoping for a big overhaul of the Rogue system here. Both of these updates will be free, but we have to wait till June to get our real first expansion for the game, which is called underground now the problem is are those two free update missions going to be enough to keep people playing and invested in the game before the first big content drop in june we shall see of course april is three weeks away which is a pretty long time in terms of gaming for now me personally i won't be playing the game much more until then all i have to do really is go from pack to pack in the dark zone endlessly grinding for no real reason and that's not enough for me to regularly jump on the game some people will find fun in that, those that enjoy grinding loot games like Diablo and the joy of repetition, but unfortunately it doesn't float my boat. In conclusion, I have had some fun here. I mean, I've played the game for 26 hours, so obviously I enjoyed parts of it, but I feel like what's happened here is that Massive have done a good job of laying down the groundwork for what could be an excellent multiplayer RPG shooter comprised of exciting PvP and PvE. They've already got the detail, the graphics, the environments perfected, the class system, the gunplay is great, but at the moment in the base game I really wish they'd experimented more, offered a small variety in the missions and just encouraged the players to synergize as a group and challenge themselves. Also very importantly, I'd love to see some meaningful PvP combat and game modes. That would be awesome. That sort of stuff really isn't in the game for me at the moment and I hope, fingers crossed, that with the expansions and free content drops, they'll begin to flesh out the game and create an end game that's worthwhile and satisfying. And that's all for today folks, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome, thank you. If you didn't, thumbs down as always. Cheers for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.